Local government in South Africa is failing. This is the narrative that many are wanting to push on us. The financial structure of municipalities makes them unsustainable, and we need to revisit the equitable share model. That is what we've been told this week. And that narrative is false. The truth is that local government, done ANC style, has failed. And the reason is simple. There's a feeling amongst ANC government employees, both political and administrative, so councillors and officials, that it is their turn to eat. And so we see ESKIM accounts not being paid. We see water boards not being paid. We see flashy Mercedes and BMW vehicles for mayoral committee members. We see lunch being served on a daily basis and overpayment for goods and services in order to fund backhanders. We see employees not doing the jobs for which they paid. We see grand scale corruption. And yet, by contrast, in democratic alliance run municipalities, we see clean orders. We see mayors arriving at ribbon cuttings in their own private vehicles. We see people's money being spent on the people. We do not see perfection, but we see consistent improvement and a world to achieve a better South Africa. So let's look at the systemic and structural problems that one of the Selga councillors bemoaned on Tuesday. Local government involves people paying taxes where they can afford it, and then paying for the services and utilities that they use. These funds are then pooled and used to facilitate the delivery of these services. Where affordability is seriously challenged, the national fiscus is used to fund a portion of these expenses. Does that sound fairly straightforward? It actually is, but it all falls flat when political experience comes into play. When you are too scared or too inefficient to bill consumers, then they will not pay. If they do not pay you, you will not have money to fulfill your constitutional obligations. If your political hegemony is too fragile and you must rely on financial irregularities to keep you in place, that is a systemic problem. If you use equitable share to buy BMWs, that is a systemic problem. It's not a, the municipal problem, it's the ANC problem system that is the problem. Your district model will solve none of this. But members of the NCRP, we must also look at ourselves. The National Council of Provinces has been abused to further questionable political agendas in local government. Much has been said about Section 139 of the Constitution over the last few days. The Section 139 resolutions that this council has taken recently on Tuane and Renosteberg have removed our own credibility and shown us to be complicit in the capture of local government. The courts have already ruled that the actions were unconstitutional. Granted, there's a pending, and the highest court will still decide. But deep down, everyone here knows that the decisions initiated in Tuane by Enisi Maile were deeply flawed. Consider for a while the Ditsobela municipality, six days without electricity. Naledi municipality in Northwest, mm -hmm. sat without electricity for three weeks in midwinter. A total inability to pay service providers was the cause. Both are under section 139.1 administration, and yet no extreme interventions have happened. The Honorable MEC from the Eastern Cape admitted to us on Wednesday that there were several municipalities who had consistently admitted inability to perform thus placing them firmly into the category defined in 139.5 of the Constitution. Yet they continue unhindered, while the comparatively operational Twani and Renosteberg municipalities are subject to this clause for nefarious political ends. Deputy Minister Parks Town told us yesterday, told us himself, that political motives are often behind many of the interventions. The Section 139 interventions that have been in place, in most instances, have failed. Well, in all instances, Mr. Lance Joel said to us that there's not been one success story since 2000. Just take a look at Amphilene municipality. More than two years under administration. For more than two years, the municipality continued to decline to a point where the army got called in to assist. The deputy president is on record voicing his dismay at Amphilene less than two weeks ago in this house. And yet, there is no improvement under Section 139. There's not even an attempt at revenue collection. The Gauteng province has had two years, and yet the municipality has regressed. MEC Maile was chased from the committee meeting by the chair, Honorable Trina Dodovu, and told to come back with better answers. 
But here's the issue. The biggest issues with Section 139 and its consistent failure to date lies in two clauses that have not been mentioned up until today. Section 1397 calls for the National Department to step in where provinces fail. But the biggest one was finally mentioned today by the Deputy Minister. But it's the inability of Dr. Dwemini Zuma's department to adopt the appropriate subordinate legislation that is proposed in Section 139.8 of the Constitution. That is the key to this whole problem. Without the subordinate legislation to inform the processes that happen under Section 139, it's no wonder that almost every province on Wednesday bemoaned the effectiveness of its interventions. It's no wonder that MEC Maile is wasting taxpayers' money in the Constitutional Court. The fault lies with the Department, the National Department, and its inability to address this legislation, which has been in draft since 2013. The name of the bill is the Intergovernmental Monitoring Support and Interventions Bill, and it's been languishing in indecisive limbo while so many councils are in desperate need of decent intervention. Well, so many good words have been spoken in this house this week. We've heard wonderful platitudes, but now they must be translated into action. It will never happen without the political will, as was said by Mayor Bongani Beloy. The Auditor General also pointed out the difference in the Western Cape, pointing out the political, positive political influences in his presentation to the finance committees. This is not just a clue. It's the fundamental basis on which we can build South Africa at the coalface of service delivery. With the right political influence, municipal excellence can be achieved. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Elijah. Thank you, Mama. Uh, the next speaker is